We're going to use a method called the instantaneous center of zero velocity to analyze objects undergoing general plane motion. So here we have a 2D object with two points A and B, and we have velocity VA and VB. The object is undergoing general plane motion, so it has our angular velocity here, omega. And we can recall that the velocity of B is equal to the velocity of A plus the velocity of B relative to A. Thus, we can say also that the velocity of B equals the velocity of A plus omega cross R of B relative to A. So if we choose a point A or identify a point such that the velocity at A equals zero, this equation will be true. So if VA equals zero or any point that we choose equals zero, then we can say VB equals omega cross R B relative to A. So this is true if we have another point, we'll call it C. So we'll put our C over here. And let's draw another position vector. So we're going to say this is R C slash A. So for any point C, we can say this equation would also be true. And you can see here we just swapped out our position vector, so our omega is going to be the same, but our position vector is going to change based on what point we're looking at. So we'll write here for any point. So at this instant in time, when you are looking at your instantaneous center of zero velocity, it's going to appear that the object is rotating about this point A, and we can analyze it as such. So point A will thus be called our instantaneous center of zero velocity. Normally, we can observe our instantaneous center by drawing. Okay, so we're going to look at this object now, similar to what's above, and we're going to have points B and C and velocity VB and VC. We're going to use this line in red, and we're going to draw a line perpendicular to our VB. And then we're going to do the same thing for our point C here. So where these two lines intersect, this is going to be what we're going to call our point A. So our lines intersect here in blue, and this is going to be our A. So this is our instantaneous center of zero velocity. So our object is going to be appearing to rotate around this point. A. So it's going to have some kind of angular velocity omega around A. And we can figure out the distances from the center to the various points now. So we're going to use these position vectors RC of A and RB slash A. So here is RC slash A. From here and here is going to be our B slash A. In red. So our velocities, we can say so our velocity B is going to be equal to R B relative to A times omega. And our velocity of point C is going to be equal to our C relative to A times omega. And these are our scalar equations. 
for our velocities. B and C. So once we know our instantaneous center and we can calculate our distances from the center, we can find the velocities of any point on our object. And it's important to note too that the instantaneous center is valid only for that instant in time. So our instantaneous center is gonna be changing over time as the object moves. So essentially, this is our procedure. We're gonna draw our lines out from our points perpendicular to our velocities and where they meet is going to be our instantaneous center. So let's look at a couple examples. Okay, so here we have three examples we're going to look at, and we're going to try to find the instantaneous center of each. So in number one here, we're going to draw our perpendicular line for VA in red, and we're going to draw a perpendicular line for VB in green. And notice how they are all on the same line. However, this problem we can see is a translation. So this is a pure translation problem. So there is no instantaneous center for any mo object moving in pure translation. So number two now, we're gonna take our line in red from VA and we're gonna take our green line perpendicular for VB. Now this is different because you can see our velocities, our magnitudes are different. So we have a longer line for VA and a shorter line for B VB. And in translation, we know that our any point on our object is moving with the same velocity, hence why on case one, they're equal. But here, we have a difference. So we're gonna take a blue line here, and we're gonna connect the heads of our vectors. And this is gonna tell us where our instantaneous center is. So I didn't quite draw these lines long enough, but we can see down here where our blue line connecting our vector heads intersects our perpendicular lines for VA and VB. This is gonna be our instantaneous center, IC. And this is where we're gonna have our object rotating. So this is gonna be, well, perhaps it would be this way, not as important but this is gonna be where our omega is. So this is where our object is gonna to appear to be rotating about. And lastly, we can look at one more example. So we're gonna take our red line, perpendicular to VA. Clean that up a little bit. And we're gonna take our green line, perpendicular to VB, and now we're gonna use our blue line to connect our vector heads. And that's gonna look like so. Pretend that's a straight line. And that'll allow us to identify this point here on our object this time as our IC. So this is gonna be our instantaneous center on the object here. We're going to look now at an example problem. So at the instant shown, the disk is rotating at an angular velocity of 4 radians per second. Determine the velocities of points A, B, and C. So let's go ahead now and draw in A, B, and C. And let's just start by drawing out what our velocities are gonna look like. So our VB is gonna be pointed straight down like so. And our VC is gonna be pointed something like this. So here's our VC. So 
So let's start now by drawing our perpendicular lines. So this line here in red is going to be our perpendicular line to VB. And this line here is going to be our perpendicular line to VC. And we notice right away that our instantaneous center must be our point A, where these two intersect. And quick note that we don't have to connect our velocity heads here because we did that last time because they were in a straight line. And when these are on different points, we can just use the intersection of those points and that will give us our instantaneous center. So at this instant, A is our instantaneous center. So the velocity of A is going to have to be equal to zero. So now we can look at VB. So VB is going to be equal to our omega times R of B relative to the instantaneous center. And that's going to look like so. So here's going to be our position vector R. And while we're at it, we can draw here. This is going to be R of C relative to the instantaneous center. So we know that our diameter is going to be equal to 0.3 meters because our radius is given. So that's going to let us plug right in and solve. So VB is going to be equal to 4 our angular velocity given to us in the problem times 3, 0.3. And that will allow us to write VB equals 1.2 meters per second. So VB equals 1.2 meters per second. So we can say VC equals our omega times our R of C relative to the instantaneous center. So RC, IC is going to be equal to the square root of 0.15 squared plus 0.15 squared. Because as you can see here, this is going to be a triangle. So this will be equal to 0.15. 0.15 because we have a circle here and we know our radius. So this distance is going to work out to give us a value of 0 0.21 meters. So now we can plug that in. So we can say VC equals 4 times 0.21 and that will give us a value for VC of 0.8 for nine meters per second. And that also assumes up here that this angle is 45 degrees, which we know is true because we drew here our 90 degree angle. So that allows us to solve for our RC relative to the instantaneous center distance value. So VC equals 0 0.849 meters per second. So here on the right, these are all of your final answers. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps support my channel and helps me continue making videos for you guys. I'll see you next time.